Welcome to the Why Not 3 podcast, where you get the behind the scenes of achieving a work-life balance with peak performance. Hi there, and welcome to the Why Not 3 Work-Life Balance for Overachievers podcast. And today, we're going to talk about work-life balance for 20 to 30-year-old entrepreneurs and overachievers. And I actually have prepared this entire outline of what I was going to discuss today because of the fact that uh, I've been every day working really hard for the last uh, couple of months now since we moved and scaled the company to, to the Netherlands. And it's been a real struggle some days to keep going. And today we kind of, um, well, I, I kind of, uh, succumbed and really needed to just rest i was doing my silent days but after the silent day as you know in the blog post i share um, i always do some kind of work because then i feel a bit comfortable but uh, i i haven't had a day where i just watch binge watch friends episodes uh, the entire day and i guess that's that's partially what you need for your, for your soul kind of and everything that you want to accomplish We've closed um, so many big clients in the last two months and I haven't celebrated. Even though I say that you really do have to celebrate and with my accountability buddy, I always share that we need to celebrate because we don't celebrate enough. Uh, And I guess today for the first time, uh, somehow my body just kind of didn't want to do anything. Um, And I kind of started binge watching stuff and I couldn't get up. And um, and the thing that got me up was Casey Neistat, and he announced that he stopped the vlog. And I I have been following him since day one, even before he was doing vlogging. I was watching his uh, after movies that he was prepping, and then when he was doing uh, the vlogs, it was really funny because you see a lot of speeches that I've been doing in the last couple of years. And even on those conferences, I would watch Casey Neistat because he would motivate me to do more. He would motivate me to work harder. And every time I would think that I wasn't uh, working too hard or I was working too much, I would just compare with Casey and, and see how much he's doing and how much I can do still. And so it was. Uh, it's quite intense um, if you're so attached to something like these positive vlogs of one person, um, which is obviously the power of consistency uh, that he triggered for his uh, people and viewers. Uh, so it's really powerful to recognize, especially we as entrepreneurs and overachievers uh, that are trying to build our own communities. So I have this whole outline and so I'm going to shape it in the sense of how to get a work-life balance for 20, 30-year-old entrepreneurs, but we're going to use a little bit Casey Neistat analogies as well um, and how it's important to, to what he says in his vlog to challenge yourself constantly and the moment you're getting comfortable um, that you really need to take that day relax, binge watch a couple of episodes, but at least get some perspective uh, on how you're doing and whether you are challenging yourself enough. Because a silent day, uh, w- uh, and it is good having a silent day, but a silent day is unfortunately too short. Uh, within one silent day, it'll take you until 12 or 1 o'clock if you've been doing it for a while just to decompress from the week. And then it'll take you another couple of hours before you can actually properly stand up, read a book, exercise maybe a little bit. Um, With exercise, I mean, obviously go outside, breathe breathe some air. Uh, Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs that just sit behind their desk the the entire week and almost don't go out unless it's a networking night. Um, And the first thing that I kind of want to share today is... Uh, If you really want to achieve a work-life balance, and this is, again, not only based on my experience, it's based on the experience of all of my mentors and what they have done in their 20s and 30s and, and kind of what they shared with me and what I see the successful people around me do as well. 
And everyone, no matter where you go, will share the advice of it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I can go into the details of, yeah, it's a marathon, not a sprint, and try to motivate you. But the reality is that um, the one thing that I shared with you already is uh, you have to treat it like a marathon. And what I mean with that is today, after two and a half months of every day working and only taking off for silent days, which is a couple of hours on a Sunday, uh, my body kind of just stopped working. I, I just needed to to sit on my couch the entire day. Um, and and so I was I was treating it as a marathon as in mindsets. But I wasn't decompressing enough uh, to really treat it like the marathon that it deserves to be treated as. Um, and as you see with Casey Neistat, for instance, he finished almost 600 plus videos. And today on the day that I decompressed and, and realized uh, and was thinking of what should I do next? We've just finished the 30 day challenge. I've been doing these speeches. I've actually uploaded two speeches. I was spe speaking at the Restart Network on Monday and on Thursday at a Venture Cafe, which is a startup hub. And, uh, and so you realize here's Casey Neistat and he posts that you always have to keep challenging yourself and it's that mentality of knowing that it's a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, if, you're, if you're sprinting, at the end of your sprint, you just want to relax a little bit and go sprint again. But if you keep sprinting for a while, then in the same location, it'll get boring. And a marathon kind of gets you through all of these different locations. Um, and you can take a break. You can divert a path. It doesn't matter as long as you get to the finish line. And I'm, not, I'm talking about the original marathons. I'm talking about how, how, it, got, how it started with, uh, I think it was a Greek person that uh, they'd won a, a battle. A Greek army won a battle and then won a messenger had to run back and give the message and he never stopped and it was uh, 42 kilometers and I think he dropped dead when he arrived or something like that and that's how the marathon started right and it didn't matter how he ran which way he took he had a mission which is um, delivering the good news which is achieving success but success can be many different things it can be um, achieving 5 million subscribers like Casey Neistat or it can be the fact that you challenge yourself. And I think for many of us, it's not, it's not achieving 5 million subscribers. It's challenging ourselves, keeping ourselves on our toes, living our passions uh, to, in a way that it doesn't bore us. Because for many overachievers, becoming bored is one of the worst things that can happen to us. And so our marathon and the way we have to shape our marathon is in an industry that we are passionate about, but also in an industry where when we run our marathons, we have enough pathways to get to our finish line, which is um, like Aristoteles used to say, ultimate eudaimonia, happiness. Uh, and our happiness lies in challenging ourselves constantly as long as it is something that we love to do. And, and I think this is, this is also what a lot of my mentors kept telling me. Our, our passion lies in, in that. Our passion doesn't lie in doing the exact same thing over and over again, systematizing everything to a point that you're just stuck in your business. That's not the point. The point is to automate and then cherry pick whatever you're passionate about at that moment. Or maybe you're passionate about selling businesses and going into new industries, revolutionizing that. So th that is a very important thing that I wanted to share. The second thing that I wanted to share is, and it's kind of in line with number one, which is try a lot. Uh, one of my mentors used to always say, have multiple plates spinning. And it's because, because we are overachievers. Uh, true entrepreneurs, true overachievers can't sit still. They cannot have one thing. They always have something on the side. Even if they have a big business, they will still have something on the side. 
And it just comes in line with what my mentor always said, which is have multiple plates spinning. And whenever one plate starts bringing in good profit and aligning to your passion and bringing you more happiness, that's the plate that you should, you should start focusing on more and you should divert your resources towards. Uh, but always have multiple plates spinning and knowing that it's a marathon and not a sprint and that you have to have multiple plates spinning you'll always always kind of keep yourself challenged and just again like and this this when I saw Casey Neistat's vlog ending everything I started realizing that he had multiple plates spinning and one plate started popping up a bit more and he started realizing that the vlog even though it was making him really big was maybe not the plate that he should be focusing on because he kind of had figured that one out already. Um, and that is kind of what I draw out of that and uh, how I'm kind of coming to terms with um, cutting something out of my life that I used to enjoy every day. And it doesn't matter where, whether it's a vlog or a silly habit that you used to do every day. You've created a neural pathway that becomes quite hard and out of research, uh, you can. It shows psychological papers have proven that when the neural pathway starts breaking down, there is actual physical pain that people experience. Just like when you have a breakup with a person, because you have so so many habits that you've created around this one person. Uh, when that neural pathway becomes unnecessary, your brain starts breaking it down, literally. And that kind of brings us to the last tip, uh, tip number three which is if you find something don't let go but do plan 10 years up front and what do i mean with that last tip that i put in my outline it's um, exactly what casey said which is a thought that i had about eight months ago when i was looking at my main company uh, and why not three which is and th he literally says this in the vlog which is um do I want to be vlogging when I'm 40 years old and he's 35? And his answer was no. And the same was with, with my main company where I do video production for multinationals. And we finished, for instance, on the 4th of November, which is a couple of weeks ago, we finished a vlog kind of after movie for TEDx uh, Rotterdam, which was a really big event. But... The reason I did that is because that was a passion project. But a year ago, that was the only thing that I did. It was only those kind of after movies. It was not scalable. And so I looked at my business model and I realized that when I'm 30, when I'm 40, I wasn't going to do these kind of vlogs. I wanted to have the freedom to choose whether or not I could do these vlogs. And so when TEDx Rotterdam popped up, I partnered up with them um, and when they asked for an after movie, I told them I will only do it if it's in my own style. Um, and so they let me. Uh, and normally, um, I, I, I don't do these vlogs anymore. Uh, we have a, a, a completely different scalable model that I introduced in, in, in my company about eight months ago when I had that idea pop up. And the same thing, and so at the same time, when I was thinking about re, re, kind of restructuring my company so that it could become scalable, I started realizing that there was there was more potential in Why Not 3 than I realized because I was doing a lot of public speaking and I would get so much energy out of giving people um, that aha moment and, and helping them to the point where they, they, I knew that they wouldn't suffer through what I suffered through uh, in discovering all the skills that I, uh, I discovered. I'll give you an example. We just had uh, a, a tremendous breakthrough with one of my coaching clients. He spent so many thousands of dollars on doctors trying to figure out what was wrong with his health. And, and with the power of tracking, uh, we start, I started tracking him every day. And within two months and a half um, we started realizing what the problem was and and then I started tracking him every day and after two weeks we literally cured something that he was struggling with for 20 years and he had literally given up he had just accepted that this was something that he was going to struggle with for the rest of his life 
And it's that kind of hope that it just it gives me energy and it drives what I want to do. Does that mean that I'm going to stop li uh, lightning video editors, which is my main company? Like, hell no. Why not three is still a passion thing for me. Um, it is something that gives me energy, that drives me, that gives me an opportunity to share with people that are not at the stage where I am with my main company, where I'm speaking with all these inspiring individuals and seeing how they conduct their lives and their businesses. So the one works together. One feeds my soul. Uh, they both feed my soul because that was the whole point of those companies. But uh, one is completely different to the other in one I get inspired and in the other I have the opportunity to inspire so what I'm trying to say with that is once you find something don't let it go easily but plan over the long term when I saw when I saw my main company when I founded my main company which is now almost three years ago um, it's not the company that it is today, but I never let go of of the main mission, of the main goal of what we're trying to do, or even the industry. And it's because we didn't do that, that I, I didn't start 20, 30 different businesses and kind of hope to get some money. No, I started building a brand. And now, three years later, we're so fortunate to have covered so many big brands because of that and and that's kind of the main message to you too. stick with one brand that's what our mentor t told me which is stick with that one brand but just plan 10 years up front and if you find that something don't let it go because that will be your pathway to success um and and the same goes and again i'm going to draw the analogy with casey neistat because i'm coming to terms with it as well which is he ended the vlog, but he's not going to quit making YouTube videos. He's not going to quit the industry that he loves, that he has been in for, I think, now almost 15, 16 years. And in that sense, he is quite an inspiration. And I just hope that at that age, um, we have um, a similar reach and potential or even bigger um, but I guess the main message that I hope to have at that um, age is a message that people truly listen to and that can inspire them and help them uh, become a, at least a little bit better but for sure more free and more passionate so that they can actually follow a path that will bring them to become the best they can be. With that, I kind of want to close this short uh, podcast uh, about uh, the three things uh, what you can do if you want to achieve a work-life balance and you're between 20 and 30 years old and you're an entrepreneur or an overachiever. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I tried to kind of put out this one uh, for Casey Neistat's vlogs, for me to come to terms with them as well. Uh, let me know what you think of Casey ending his vlogs. Let me know what you think of Why Not 3. Um, and let's chat. Um, also, don't forget to go and uh, see more of what we do on whynot3.com. Maybe you like the message. Maybe you're struggling with something that you're not passionate about or you're just struggling with something in your health, wealth, or relationships. But for now, I want to close it. And I want to thank you for your attention, for being here with me and listening to the podcast.